Okay, now we have our A tier, which are the sieves that are almost as good as the S tier sieves, but fall short in at least one key way that really prevents them from being as dominant as the S tier sieves. So starting with number nine, the Burmese, they just missed the cutoff for S tier, and I probably would put them in S tier last patch, but due to nerfs to the Arambai and Battle Elephant, their death y comp isn't nearly as strong anymore. But with that said, they have an amazing infantry bonus with their plus one attack, which helps both in the early game with your men at arm rush and in the late game with a very powerful halberdiers. Their free lumber camp upgrades is not as good as the Kelp bonus, but pretty close to it. And their Again, their Arambai are so incredibly powerful that with their great monks and elephants, and they can even go knights with bloodlines, just a very, very powerful civilization. However, their archers are awful to compensate for all that. And the fact that you can't really make archers past the early castle age due to lacking thumbring and leather archer armor, it really feels like a, a gaping hole in the civilization. That means that they're not as well-rounded as uh, the S-tier civilizations. So that's why I put them at the top of A-tier. Next, we have the Italians at number 10, which may be a surprise to some people, but I think this is a very well-rounded and powerful civilization in many matchups, where your aging up bonus is useful across the board, and in the Feudal Age can help both with a Men-at-Arms rush and Scout rush due to your food savings. It can help in a fast castle age if you have a nice closed map, and it lets you get to imperial age just a bit faster. Not as good as the Byzantines, but just a bit faster. And as far as army comps go, you have an excellent array of powerful archers. You have knights with bloodlines, you have trash, you have everything except the halberdier, but you also have the Genoese crossbowmen and condottiero, which are both very powerful in their Way against certain types of civilizations. Now where does the civilization fall short? They don't have a real eco bonus past their advancing to the next age cheaper, and kind of like the Ethiopians, it's a great bonus but ceases to be useful once you age up, and other civilizations have more long-lasting eco bonuses. In addition, they don't have a particularly powerful death ball -y comp, like the Burmese above them and many of the other civilizations, and they just don't really have that big punch in the post-imperial age like some other civs. At number 11, we have the Britons, an AOC favorite, as their archers are certainly very famous and a very dominant feudal to castle age civilization. Their faster working shepherds ensure a nice Lean Dark Age into Feudal Age, making men at arms most likely. But in the Feudal Age, you can also create those archers faster than other civilizations and can actually snowball you the early Feudal Age archer game. Of course, the civilization is most deadly in the Castle Age, where their extra archer range means that they can outrange mangonels and even get an additional nine range with yeomen. Of course, this compounds with their town centers costing less wood, which gives you a nice clean boom to get into an Imperial Age. Of course, in Imperial Age, they have their laser trebs that have 100% accuracy with Warwolf and blast damage, I guess. But other than that, the civilization really starts to fall off as they don't have a very strong pushing power against a lot of civilizations, and they kind of get wrecked by Siege Ram. Also, they lack bloodlines, which is a pretty big deal as your opponents will likely be making skirmishers to counter your archers. And not having bloodlines is something that is important for me in terms of just having a civilization that can deal with a variety of threats and why I put them below the Burmese and Italians. Of course, regardless, a very powerful civilization in their own right and one of my personal favorites. Coming in at number 12, we have the Magyars, which might again be a bit of a surprise to some people that I'd put them so low considering pros really like the civilization. However, I do think they are a bit overrated in that 
To me, they feel like a more late game oriented Huns with their better pound for pound cavalry archers and the Magyar Hussars, which are an amazing trash unit. And of course, having access to the Paladin as well. However, to me, this civilization lacks any real economy bonus. Yes, their Scout Rush is very powerful, being cheaper and getting that free forging upgrade. But beyond that, it kind of feels somewhat generic. But getting into the Castle Age, yeah, you get Iron Casting for free, which means you get pretty quick, fully upgraded knights. But other than that, you have no real means of producing those knights any faster, nor are your Cavalry Archers anything to write home about until you get Recurve Bow in Imperial Age. So for that reason, I kind of put them at the middle of A tier. But of course, with that said, very powerful Scout Rush, certainly a powerful post imp and in the right situations these guys can definitely run. moving right along we have the Celts, another aoc favorite all william wallace fans everywhere this sieve is just one that feels nice and consistent throughout many stages of the game with their bonuses helping you at different points in the game with their infantry bonus helping you early and late game their Lumberjack bonus helping you a lot in the early game and kind of tapering off towards the late game. And their Siege weapons firing faster is just an amazing bonus in the late game, especially with their extra hit points for their Siege. Now, where the civilization definitely falls off is in the late Castle Age, where archers are garbage at that point, despite your faster wood cutting being useful earlier on. Knights lack bloodlines again, and your monks are pretty bad too. So you really feel kind of stuck in the late castle age to early imperial age until you get that Woad Raider machine going. Of course, Woad Raiders, Halberdiers, and Siege is an incredibly difficult to deal with late game. And the Celts are certainly not a civilization that feels weak. I'd say that against a variety of civilizations, it's actually really hard to deal with the Celts. It's just they really are somewhat predictable in what they're going to do, especially in the early Imperial Age. So knowing that they're going to be vulnerable at this point means that your opponent can pile on the pressure when the Celts are trying to get those expensive techs up. And you see this a lot in expert matches. Rounding out our A tier at number 14, we have the Byzantine, a very flexible, diverse civilization whose cheap trash can certainly win you games. The extra building HP is a nice boon to have in terms of both offensively with trushing and defensively when you're either being trushed or trying to keep walls and buildings up. That, along with their town watch, is just nice sort of defensive bonus early. Of course, their cheap trash is just excellent and can really save you a lot of gold over the course of the game. Which means that in some situations, you can even afford cataphracts in a 1v1 if your opponent is an infantry-heavy civilization. In addition, their cheaper Imperial Age means that you can really get up to imp pretty quickly and start pumping out stuff like hand cannoneers and bombard cannons or even arbalests. Unfortunately, the civilization doesn't really have any economy bonus, except for the cheap trash, which is only situationally useful at certain points in the game. In addition, they lack bloodlines for their knights, which is a big deal for me, like I've said, and it really limits their castle age options to monks, arbalests, and siege. In addition, lacking bloodlines is definitely a big deal with me, and the fact that you don't have the threat of making knights with bloodlines means that you're kind of predictable and that you're going to be going for either skirmishers, crossbowmen, or monks. With that said, the civilization has few real downsides, it's just they don't have enough upsides to really contend with the sort of superpower civilizations at many points in the game. And again, are lacking that real death ball in the late game, unless you can get up to cataphracts, which if you're affording elite cataphracts with Logistica, you're probably winning that game with any civilization. Nevertheless, that will round out our A tier, all civilizations that are potent in their own right and can very much challenge the S tier civilizations, but like I've said, have really defining weaknesses at certain points in the game that really keep them from being as overbearing when compared to all of the other sims in the game. Okay, hello, Ornlu from the future is back again, and uh, I'm just here to remind you that 
because the video in its entirety would be an hour and a half long without cutting it into several bits, um, I am splitting the tier list into five sections, and this is the end of the A tier section. So I'll leave the, uh, the link for the next video in the description, uh, which would be B tier once that goes up, and uh, of course a link to the previous video, which is the S tier and the introduction. So uh, see you in the next one. Hope you enjoyed watching.